Our concert continues with performer number 177. His work is titled, Let's Dance. I love Bollywood. Every film a blend of brilliant colors and infectious music. But the best part is the story. Poor boy falls for rich girl, dance sequence, and Jai Ho! <laughs> You've got yourself a slumdog millionaire. <laughs> Bollywood films make life seem exciting and endlessly joyful. But last summer, I traveled to India. Have you ever visited a place where the reality didn't live up to the brochure? <laughs> I found that the story of Bollywood was just that, a story. Instead of dancing and romancing, I saw pollution and poverty. And this disconnect between story and reality extends far beyond India's borders. We are a storytelling society. We each seek to provide our scattered and confusing experiences with a sense of coherence by arranging the episodes of our lives into stories. But the problem arises when our complex reality doesn't match the narrative. Author Jonathan Gottschall writes that the storytelling mind is addicted to meaning. If we cannot find meaningful patterns in the world, we impose them. In short, the storytelling mind churns out true stories when it can, but will manufacture lies when it can't. And this leads me to my primary concern. Too often, we let the simplified narrative structure of stories blind us to the complexity of the real world. Like every story, this one has a beginning, middle, and end. First we will see how imposing narrative on real life skews our understanding of the past. Next, we will examine the damages caused by our desire for happy endings. And finally, we'll try to write a new story by learning to see past our simplified narratives. Stories are great. They entertain us, help us to transmit culture and values from one generation to the next, and they gave the world Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> but our love of narrative causes our perspectives to go awry when we insist on viewing complex, real-world information through the narrative lens. False narrativization infects even our classrooms, reducing complex history to comic books. Atlantic journalist Michael Conway explains that American students learn history as a single story. Why did World War II happen? Hitler. Who freed the slaves? Lincoln. But treating history as a monolithic narrative leads us to manufacture lies about the past. Now Mahatma Mohandas Gandhi is revered in history as the saintly hero who achieved India's independence. However, journalist Mayuk Sen explains that the Gandhi narrative excludes the uncomfortable facts that Gandhi sexually assaulted women. 
espoused anti-blackness, and ignored India's untouchable caste. The Gandhi narrative is so powerful that when I related these details to members of my own family, they flipped out. <laughs> Are you smoking weed? <laughs> Gandhi was a saint. Watch the Ben Kingsley movie and get your story straight. Gandhi was important and influential, but his story was complex, and imposing a simplified narrative structure makes his history a lie. Bollywood films all follow familiar narratives. The villain seems poised for victory for the first four hours of the movie. But inevitably, the protagonist rises up and wins the girl in a climactic dance sequence. <laughs> the happy ending is key to our narrative. No matter how bad things get, our sense that a happy ending is just around the corner gives us a reason to keep fighting. But there are problems with this way of thinking. Psychologist Dan McAdams explains that the trouble comes when redemption is not possible. Sometimes there is no happily ever after. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Amanda Bennett tells about her husband, Terrence, who was diagnosed with cancer shortly after their marriage. Terrence fought heroically, but ultimately succumbed to the disease. Amanda explains that once it became clear Terrence's cancer was terminal, they felt shut out from the cancer community. Cancer advocacy is so focused on the narrative of the happy ending that it often isolates those whose outcomes are not ideal. And Amanda and Terrence are not alone. Journalist Peggy Orenstein notes that the Susan G. Komen Foundation, our nation's largest breast cancer support organization, spends only 3% of its budget on research into terminal cancer. In the cancer narrative, Amanda explains that dying is seen as failing. We have a heroic narrative for fighting together but we don't have a narrative for letting go. Now in my household, Bollywood is a big deal. We are lifetime members of Indian Netflix. <laughs> but we have learned, sometimes painfully, that the narratives we live by aren't always benign. On September 11th, 2001, I was two years old. And that evening, my family watched as the horrific tragedy unfolded. My parents recall that at one point on that terrible day, an image appeared on our TV screen. And my two-year-old self was amazed to see my father on the nightly news. I tugged on my father's sleeve, pointed at the screen, and shouted, Papa. Papa. The image on the screen was not my father. It was Osama bin Laden. My father tells me that this was a moment of profound fear. He was afraid, afraid that Americans would, as I had innocently done, see my father's beard and turban and think, terrorist. 
in the aftermath of 9-11. Our grieving nation quickly adopted what author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie calls the danger of a single story, a simplified narrative where all Sikhs and Muslims are national villains. In October of 2001, Vandal spray painted the word towel heads on our Sikh temple. That winter, two Sikh-owned gas stations in our community were held at gunpoint. And many Sikh boys who were bullied at school were forced to renounce tenets of their Sikh faith by removing the sacred turban and cutting their unshorn hair. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to flip the script. <laughs> to turn our narratives on their heads and see the reality that they obscure first. We must recognize when the simple stories we lay over our complex lives cause us to misunderstand our relationships. We must cast aside destructive narratives seeing each other, not as cartoon caricatures, but as complex and loving human beings. Second, you know that one nincompoop on Facebook that you don't understand and never agree with? Don't unfriend this person. Invite them to the dinner table. Learn to talk and listen. Hear the stories of our fellow Muslims and Christians, blacks and whites, Trump supporters and sane people. With an open mind, <laughs> find areas where our stories overlap. This does not mean that we should ignore our differences, but disagreement needn't be enmity. And finally, it's time to close the book. What we need is a new story. A story that recognizes life's complexities. A story where, to paraphrase Dickens, we can all be the heroes of our own lives despite our struggles, economic status, religion, or race. A story where death does not have to mean failure. A story where heroes do not have to fight villains. Like all good Bollywood films, we have to learn to share the music <laughs> and realize that we're all in this dance. Together. <laughs>